George and Sean, uh, good to see this uh, wrapped up for the for the year. The Adam, Adam Troutman deal, what did you guys like? I mean, in particular, Sean, what have you seen in Adam over the course of your two years coaching him, and where do you expect him to go now that you've got him back in your midst? Um, so we drafted Adam um, out of Dayton. Um, he played for us for two years. Uh, in describing the player, he, you know, he is that – that the versatile tight end that can play the F tight end, he played a lot most recently on the ball. Um, you know, generally, generally when you draft a tight end out of college, they do one thing better than the other, blocker first. And um, when we drafted Adam, we, we felt like he kind of was one of those guys that um, was solid in both areas. Uh, we utilized him um, depending on who was up and who was down, who was healthy. Uh, both in line and at the F position. Um, so really to answer your question, we comped him to a handful of the tight ends that we were discussing in, in this draft. We drafted Adam in the third round, and, I, and ironically, we were comping him to a few of the other third-round players. He's clean, great makeup, great character. Um, I think part of that became available because New Orleans uh, – they were able to sign a tight end, and I'm sure they were looking at, you know, uh, the long-term plans with, with, with Adam. And so we felt this was one of the uh, needs for us coming in. Um, we couldn't force that. And so when we passed that little area or, or sweet spot of tight ends and maybe drafted another player yesterday, this kind of came up. And um, we both felt like, man, just, you know, flipping – really picks and all of a sudden getting a player that uh, that we have a clear vision for. Um, obviously, we have a little head start on the history because we drafted him. Um, th that that was something that um, was just as exciting as any part of yesterday or today be because that was something we were looking for. So, um, you know, coming in with his vers versatility as a blocker, but then as a receiver. George, what are the conversations like with Vance? Because Sean, you can speak directly to the offense and obviously you want to have your fingers as much on the defense, but with what BJ needs or wants as relative to the board and all that kind of leading up and during the draft. I mean, it's ongoing, you know, and we've had, like I said earlier, we've had these discussions, you know, the past month on all these players. And then, you know, Vance and throughout the draft, all the coaches, you know, we, we have dialogue and, 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 you know, we'll bring him in the room and, and ask, you know, the questions that we've already asked just to reaffirm, you know, affirm, um, you know, what we're about to do, but no, it's, it's constant throughout the draft with Vance and all the coaches, Sean and I speak, you know, throughout the draft. So it's very, very collaborative. I mean, we get, we get the reports and the, and the vision. We know what the scheme is. We discussed it yesterday. Um, and then we go to work and, and that's, I think teams sometimes operate maybe where there's uh, this side of the building is offense, this side is defense, and this side is special teams. And I'm not really familiar with that at all. Um, and so uh, their input is extremely valuable. And yet, um, you know, it's, 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 here's the one thing. These area scouts have seen these players multiple times in the school multiple times at these pro days. Uh, we can't possibly um, have that same exposure. And then the, the great part of this process is when the vision uh, begins to align with, with uh, the scouts, George and I, and, and, and then the coaching staff. But um, yeah, we, we, we pay close attention to the scouts' grades and then the coaches' grades as well. And then, honestly, we evaluate the evaluators. Like, we're, for, for me, you know, I haven't worked with a lot of these coaches. And so you're, you're you know, there's some guys that once you've worked with for a while, you, you know, you're all ears. And then there's some guys that are, you know, quite fr frankly, earning your ears. Um, but, yeah, so that part of it was smooth. Coach, for you, had a history of getting contributions from rookie players. I guess, what have you learned about how to go about getting those from guys and what do you need from them when they come in here? Yeah, I think the first message, and I'll try to be quick that, that I was taught, um, you know, so we, we have X amount of draft picks today and yesterday. Um, we're in the midst of signing a number of undrafted free agents. 
Um, in two weeks, we're going to have a rookie mini camp. There'll be some tryout players at that camp. There'll be some veteran trial players. So call it four different groups of players, draft picks, uh, signed free agents, um, tryout free agents and veteran tryouts. Um, the first message to every one of them is the, the process that is ending uh, is the method of how we the method of how we procure the player and, and try to assign the, the correct value to these players and, and bring the best talent in in predicting the order for us to do it. All right. That being said, once they're sitting in that meeting room, you know how they arrived is of no importance to us at that point. We're playing the best players. And so historically, when we're talking to these free agents, um, you know, some teams you, you can you can actually show that. Uh, and and I think it's important for every one of them. They'll all have a piece of tape on the front of their helmet with their last name. Um, and we're just going to go by what we see. And uh, so I think to answer your question, sometimes, you know, younger guys play earlier. Sometimes that it's because of uh, a need you might have, um, but I would say most importantly, um, you're you're evaluating the team, and and then what's the contribution? What's the vision? Can he help in the kicking game? There's only a handful of players on the sidelines in an NFL game that that don't go in. You know, the backup lineman, if you stay healthy, they might go in for the field goal team. Um, your backup quarterback, all right, might have a clean uniform, and then you start looking at. And you guys have covered college football. There's 110 people uh, in the NFL. It's a very, it's a very uh, quiet sideline area, and so you've got to be able to look and say, all right, how many plays do we see this player playing if they're not starting? So all of that I think goes into what you were asking. For for both of you, what do you like about Skinner from Boise State, and and had he not suffered that? injury right before the do you think that maybe had an effect on him being yeah hurt? I think we all felt that I mean we we've liked him throughout the process uh I mean the first thing you see is his size you know he's almost six four and that you know the athletic ability for that size is is, is we thought was unique you know the short area quickness the range uh, you see the ball skills on tape um the thing that really sticks out is is his physicality you know and and playing downhill in the run game and and you see that all over the tape. He's a fun watch, and and Sean and I have watched a lot of, a lot of tape on him, you know. But uh, he's a fun watch. We were, I think the injury did impact, you know, where he was drafted. We we were we felt very fortunate to get him where we did. Yeah, we I we were that was kind of our like little joined at the hip player that we just kept looking at, and we all have you know when this process takes place, you, you have certain players you gravitate to. Um, his length is something that stood out in the way you can catch the ball. Yeah, two-parter. Uh, I think for Sean, the tight end room now, you added Troutman and Manners. And um, what does that mean for, you know, like what's your vision for Albert O and, uh, and Dulcich is yeah. the first part. So the, the easy answer to that question is um, it means they're all competing right now. They're all – I think you look at, look, there's a certain strength Manhurts has, and there's a strength that Dulcich has, and I'd say those would probably be at the other end of the room. But, um, you know, how do, how do they fare during the offseason? How do they do in training camp? Uh, it's a position that has become more valued in our league um, relative to some of the matchups you can create and what you want to do running the football. Um, so all of those guys that you mentioned, every one of them, um, Man, we're, we're rooting for them and putting them in positions. Uh, if one of them is a better receiver, then we're going to spend hours trying to come up with, you know, things that they do well, develop, you know, the things that they don't. But, um, you know, I go back to not even Jason Witten or Jeremy Shockey or Jimmy Graham. Uh, I've been lucky to, to have been around some of those other. They all did certain things, maybe one thing better than the other. I think our jobs as coaches is to kind of give them, you know, those songs that that fit their skill set, and uh, and I would say that with those players, um, uh, we would never sit in here in April and lay out who we think. I have no idea how that's going to unfold, but I know we have more options to see how it unfolds as opposed to uh, penciling in. Um, 
you know, starting lineups. We look, we've cut fourth round draft picks and kept free agents, but we're going to, we're going to play the best players, but we, we knew we felt like we needed this versatile tight end that, that could block uh, and, and have some ability to catch. And we were lucky really that we didn't have to draft it. We weren't able to. And then the, we talked about this yesterday, the mistake then is you, you you create it and reach for it in the draft, and we didn't have to do that. And then the other part is uh, this: uh, Troutman's the sixth former Saint that you've had that uh, they've picked up. Is that, as you gathered those players, was that important to you as far as establishing the culture you like and and the system? Not at that all. You have? No, not at all. Uh, look, each within each you know, man hurts. We felt like we found. Um, unfortunately, uh, just as we develop him, he really played in Carolina and Jacksonville, and we followed his career and really, uh, um, you know, we never really got to have a chance to to use him. Um, you know, little Jordan Humphrey was a player I'm familiar with. Uh, he'll compete in the receiver room. Marquez the same way. Tony, the runner. So with each of these signs, there, there's there's different visions, but – uh, there wasn't um, there wasn't one where you felt like, hey, uh, these are younger players. You know, it, it's different if you said you went out and got one of these veterans that you were bringing in to. Um, I would say the players that we signed throughout free agency, regardless of where they came from, starting with McGlinchey or our guard. And uh, that's all part of this stew that that's going to create the culture. And, and honestly, the, the people from within that are that are here that are that are anxious to win and have success. Um, so no, and I understand because I'm, I'm familiar with if, if there was that veteran player, um, you know, it was Chris Banjo, and then and then Chris is like, I'd like to coach, and I'm like, well, all right, then you coach, <laughs> and and so that 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 was one of those former veteran players, but the younger guys. Um, you know, our, our younger guys that uh, we have, a, a, you get the benefit of, 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 of an exposure from another roster. And so that's one of the pluses, that's all. And it, it wasn't like we have to have X number of players. It, it, each one will have to earn his own, his own stripes. George, with Foresight, do you see him as a center? Is he as somebody who could compete? for a starting job uh, and cause he's shown versatility at Oregon. And also is there any interest still in bringing Kareem Jackson back with the drafting of Skinner? Yeah. I mean, foresight, we see him as a center who can flex and in, in he's going to compete just like all the rookies and in, in, in the entire team. You know, I was able to see him play at CU uh, this year. He was a pet cat, you know, for the O-line coaches, you know, just tough, smart, uh, you know, just love the way he plays the game. And, and, and so he's going to compete, you know, like everyone else. Um, and we're open with Kareem where, you know, the talks are ongoing, you know, we're speaking with Kareem and, and his agent. So we're open. Skinner, the, the Skinner. No, it doesn't have anything to do with Kareem. Okay. Yep. Uh, hey, George, I know you talked before the draft about there already being a strong foundation on defense. You did draft three of your five players on defense. How do you feel that you helped your defensive depth in this draft? Yeah, no, I think we helped our depth and it's ongoing. It never stops just because you have the draft. But I, you know, I think we, we definitely helped ourselves. We wanted to, you know, help, uh, you know, ourselves on the back end, and I, you know, we did that. I feel with Riley and and Skinner and 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 Drew and all these guys. But uh, we're just adding to a defense we already think, you know, is pretty good, and and we'll continue to add as we're doing right now. Our scouts over there working, uh, you know, free agency, and and Sean spoke to the scouts and the entire room today about, you know, all the former free agents that have made teams and gone on to be in the Hall of Fame and. And so we're, you know, we're hoping to find a few really good players in the free agent, you know, post draft. For both you guys, you, you talked the other day about shop spending versus saving, and with five slots, there's only so much you can, you can spend. And that line of it, uh, fans are going to ask about the tailback room. What did you like? Not like there. Obviously, that'll probably be a free agent thing you address. I would imagine going forward. And what do you want to see from what guys are out there on the open market going forward? You know, sometimes it just doesn't fall. You know, you may you may, you know, want to address a certain position. It just doesn't fall your way. So you address another position. I think we both talked about uh, when this started that you know we're gonna we're gonna try to take you know the best value, the best you know the grade that we have on a regardless you know 
of needs. And, and, and I feel like we did that throughout the draft. We stayed true. Um, we did trade up a few times. We traded back today, you know, and, and to get a tight end that we feel can help us. So, you know, um, it never, you know, doesn't end. You know, we're going to keep looking uh, for certain positions. We're always looking. That's part of what you do. And when you're in my seat, you're always looking to help your football team. For both of you, uh, how many undrafted rookies do you think you'll end up signing? And will, do you think you'll have draftable grades on some of those guys? Yeah, I think so. A lot of, you know, it's ongoing right now. I think it'll be in the teens. I can't give you a number right now, you know, um, but I think there'll be a handful that we're on our front board, you know, or more. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, that was kind of. You guys all have heard about the process of that, the, the, those two hours afterwards, but um, there, there was still some good football players there, and, and we, felt, um, we felt real fortunate to, to have a chance at that center, um, you know, that late in the, in the draft, um, you know, considering that was a, a pick that we had swapped for the, for the tight end. And, and so some of our mocks, we actually had you know, seen that center possibly as a six-round player. And then, look, it works out where you end up with the tight end and you still end up with the center. So um, it doesn't always work out that way. But uh, in the in the the good thing is we had a few players that we would have maybe taken with that last pick and we were able to get them, you know, we think in free agency. So it, it, it worked out, I think. Last week, you both talked about best player available. That was going to be your approach. George, you just mentioned how, how you think you accomplished that. Was it difficult at times in the draft to, to stick with that and both be on that, that same page? I, no, I, I think um, the um, – no, I, I don't think so. I, I, there, was, there was one period yesterday that wasn't difficult, but there were a number of moving pieces relative to um, – I'm trying to think what pick it was. Was it, uh, was it the it was, linebacker? Yeah. We, we, right in that short area, we had three picks right in that kind of – So you know, stuff that, was happening We fast. had a lot of things going on, you know, and, and um, they're all in that range, that grade range. And so we've had those discussions about those players before, but when you get on the clock, you know, and then you have a trade. and But it was really, you know, it was really – it worked out, you know. Um, most of the tough discussions are in your meetings. And then when you're on the clock – you know, those are fairly peaceful, you know, is fairly calm. And, um, we, you know, we spoke about that last night. We didn't have any of those, and, and, and we've done it long enough to know when it's, we're going to have more in the future, but we didn't have any of those. We're getting ready to go, and then, boom, our player just went. Um, guys, both of you, did, was, did this draft end up being kind of a, a nice melt of best player available and roster needs? Or did it kind of balance out a little bit? And also, can you both give us maybe a, just a general overview of how successful you feel like the last 24 hours have been? Well, the first thing I would say, and Bill used to tell me this all the time, um, tomorrow's the, the day that all the draft grades come out. And uh, I love tomorrow. Um, but truly, I hope three years from now, when all of us will have a better idea of how this draft went, um, the reports will be good, and so um, again, we we heard the we heard it a million times. We got our guy today. All right, half of them are lying, and uh, but I would say, and I don't want to speak for George, but um, man, I was excited, and uh, the process and the hours going into it, um, all of that because it was new for me and there's elements of it that were new relative to how we scout. And, and then, man, there's some things that, um, that were fantastic. And, and if you started really at the beginning of it all and you said, here's free agency, here we are, the, the draft just ended, um, I'm really excited. And, and I think, um, yeah, I think that's, a, that's an honest answer. Great. It's good. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys.